goodness of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Everything that happens in our lives is due to your goodness. That's end of story. You are a good God and you work all things together for good to those who love you and are called according to your plans and your purposes. And so even though there's emotions today and there's sadness today, this is an excellent day. This is all a reflection of the goodness of God. God, I just speak blessing over every person that's attending today, people in the Philippines watching on live stream, um, Bree and other family members. God, we just speak the peace of God into people's hearts. It's, it's emotional, it's upsetting, but God, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And we just thank you for that peace. Is, it's in you and it's in Jesus Christ. And God, I just speak blessing over every single person that's any way involved in this service this morning. Any person that's known Christine, that knows Christine, isn't upset by her passing. God, we just speak peace over every single person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Feel free to take your seats, guys. It's probably a bit odd to be quite so happy, um, but it really is a good day, amen? I mean, it's an emotional day, and I really haven't thought too much about what I was uh, going to share here. We're just going to do what we do and just let it all run out, so it, it's good. Um, I mean, if I had my preferences, where would I want my wife to be right now? There, right there, standing there. That's my preference, right? Uh, but knowing where she is, and knowing who she's with, and knowing what she's doing, would I want her back? No, because that would be completely unfair and just wrong, because where she is now is where she wants to be. Uh, if you, you, You're here because you know Christine, and uh, the one thing you know about Christine is that she actually loved Jesus more than she loved anyone else. And the reason she loved everyone else is because she loved Jesus so much. End of story, right? That's it. She had her, her affections so set and entrenched in him. Um, and that's why you all liked her so much. It, I mean, we all liked her for different reasons, right? And I liked the whole package. But the reality is what we all liked was the fact that it was Christ in her that came through her in every breath and everything that she actually did. And... Um, well, we are here to honour Christine and, and to bless her. We're not here to send her off because she's well and truly gone. She went a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so we, we're not downplaying Christine, but the reality is for every single one of us, most of us here are Christians. And if it wasn't for Christ, what would we be? <laughs> Nothing. And so, so Christine's an awesome woman, and I love every single bit of her. Uh, I, I love the fact that she was so genuine, she was so authentic. Um, you know, it didn't matter whether she was talking to a child in the slums of the Philippines or whether she was talking to, chatting to ScoMo, you know, the, the Prime Minister in a church in Sydney. She just, because a few times we sat behind him and greeting times and Chris just stands up, Scott, how you doing? G'day, mate. And she was the same with every single person. She was, there was no pretense. There was no, there was no airs and graces. And when she was with you, she was with you. She, she wasn't looking over your shoulder to see who else was, was coming in that might be a little bit more important that she should spend her time with. And, uh, and so she was just genuine. She was authentic. She's, um, she's the real deal. And if you've had any conversations with her in the last couple of years, she's actually talked so much about this day. She's been hanging out for this day. Like, she's been so excited. Probably for the last five years, we've had so many conversations that she's just hanging out to meet Jesus. Not that she didn't know him already, but actually hanging out to meet Jesus. And um, so she had absolutely no fear of death. She was totally looking forward to it because it was all actually about Jesus. It wasn't about her dying. It was about her transitioning. And it was about her coming face to face with Jesus. So, and it, it was an interesting thing. One short story, and then we'll, we're going to sort of read a few things from other people. But it was probably about six months ago now that I actually went through my wife's entire death process. It was a very bizarre thing. She was actually in Queensland visiting a friend. And I was working at RM Williams, which is very boring, mundane, monotonous work. But you've got headphones on there because it's quite noisy. And so you've got worship music in or you've got the Bible going just for the entire shift. And um, 
literally for the first session of the, of the shift, I, I, sort of, I went through this prolonged, almost like an open vision, and I watched the entire death process of my wife, because she was always expecting it to be spectacular, just dying and having Jesus somehow appear and just reach out his hand and walk off with her. Like She was just expecting it to be absolutely awesome. And I'm working away, and people must have thought I was an absolute idiot because I do silly things at work, raise hands, worship, sing out loud, it's all good. But I'm, I'm, I'm going through this whole death process with my wife, and I'm just watching her die, not, not physically as in have a stroke or anything like that, not the practice. I'm watching the spiritual side of it, and I'm watching her as she just ends life, and she was actually lying down on something, but she ended life, and then I watched the whole process as heaven came down, came around, as Jesus walked in. And it was, I can summarize it really short, but it truly went for a couple of hours. And the whole process of her actually leaving her body and, and going out and being with Jesus. And it was so real. And remember, she's in Queensland, right? So we get to morning tea at work and I think, I better ring her up and just, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell her. So I'm ringing my, my wife and I'm explaining to her the vision I've just had. And she's all excited about it because it was so much more spectacular than what she thought. <laughs> she thought it was going to be great, but it was flipping awesome. And I'm, even at work, I'm like, wow, this is just, I'm making boots. And it, I'm, this is just, this is off the charts. And so I've had to phone her up and just explain it all to her. And then, of course, I had to say bye, just, just in case it was today, you know, like, and she was just laughing her head off. And if you know Christine, she always used her phone on speaker. So she had a totally, a totally non-Christian friend sitting in the car seat next to her while I'm explaining to them both that, that I've just watched my wife dying and, babe, if it happens today, it's going to be awesome. You're going to absolutely love it. I don't know what they talked about afterwards. I'm sure that was a very interesting conversation. <laughs> but, but the reality is it truly is a celebration, right? It truly is a celebration. And as Christians, we know this is not the end of anything. It's just a, it's just a change. It's just actually a little bit of a transition. And um, we'd all prefer her, me, family, we'd all prefer her to be here. But at the same time, we're actually all really happy for her to be where she is. Amen. Because we're all going there one day. And I don't understand heaven. You know, we all say all those nice things at funerals. Well, we'll meet you one day. I don't know if that's how it works. Not really fussed. I just know I'm going to get there one day. And I, I was hoping we'd get there on, you know, a little bit closer terms. But she's decided she's wanted out early. So... It's all good, but um, I really do thank you all for coming and for the, there were so many people involved in sort of the, the hospital and the ICU thing, that was just um, incredible, Th literally thousands and thousands of people just praying and believing and standing with us and um, even though I've said it on, on the blog and a, a couple of videos, it sort of looks like we lost, we didn't lose anything, like we didn't lose anything, you know, there's no, there's no such thing as loss in the kingdom of God, it's all win-win. It's just we have this perspective of what a win looks like. And, and for me, the win, you know, ideal, perfect world, the win is my wife not being in the box, that wife being standing here next to me. That's my idea of the win. But the reality is she's won. Amen? She's won. And, and we've won in so many ways. There's stories and, and testimonies I can't share here. That there's just dozens of them. So it's all win-win for the Christian. There's nothing negative about this at all. Amen? Nothing negative. I'm going to um, read something. We've got a couple of family members stuck in Ballarat in the whole plague state. Uh, and they couldn't make it. So I'm just going to read this. This is from uh, Bree, uh, Christine's daughter. And she's got two, um, two girls, um, Abby and Coco. And they both love their grand uh, greatly. Um, Bree was able to be over here for some of the time in the hospital. But then she had to go back to Ballarat. And then with new cases popping up, she didn't get her... Uh, appropriate clearances to come back and all that sort of stuff. So I'll read this. I'll try not to cry. It's not too sooky, but we'll just see how we go. I have learned how to cry and talk, so it's all good if tears come. It doesn't actually matter. Okay, so this is from, uh, from Brie, and she's over in Ballarat. She's watching it on live stream with her two girls. So she's, welcome all, and thank you for coming to join in the celebration of mum's life. If you're here, it's because mum, in some way, shape or form, impacted your life, just as you all had a huge impact on hers. I'd like to share a, a simple Bible verse with you. 
It's the same verse my mum chose for me to read at her father's farewell many moons ago. It clearly meant a great deal to her and it comforted her when it was Pop's time to leave. And now we're going to read from Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. So there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stone and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, time to be silent and time to speak, time to love and a time to hate, time for war and a time for peace. Mum had many of these times in her life and in the more challenging times, Jesus carried her through. This final time, he carried her to heaven where she will undoubtedly be having a party. She'll be singing and dancing like no one's watching, but I don't think mum would care one iota, two hoots, or even give a brass razoo if anyone was. Mum talked the talk, walked the walk, and a couple of weeks ago, it was mum's time to leave her earthly body to be welcomed into heaven and to hear Jesus say, very good, well done, good and faithful servant, because she would definitely hear that. Today is our time to celebrate mum's life and to wish her fond farewells, not goodbyes. Forever in our memories she will remain. Hooroo mum, see you later. So that's from Bree over in Ballarat. I'm just going to open up to any of the other family members if they want to come up and, and say any words to um, farewell Chris. We all good? Hi everyone. Um, I didn't plan anything for today and I can talk a lot like my mother and my sister so it could get all rambled but um, I did want to write a poem for mum because she always loved when I wrote poems but didn't have it in me at the moment. So there was something I read for my dad um, when he passed over 20 years ago. And it's just something simple, um, a poem that she liked um, that I read. So I will um, just read that. I can't see. <laughs> we little knew that day God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And although we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. And that was just something that I used to write. I had in my poem book, one day I'll write one for her. There were some she couldn't read because I'm such an emotional person. But I was just really blessed like all of you just to have mum be my mum and she was mum to so many others. I had to share her and that was okay. Um, but just everything she taught, I was just, I felt so inadequate at the moment to go and do life without her. Um, I consulted her on everything. Um, she made my life decisions with me more so than my husband did. <laughs> um, but um, I just hadn't been, been wondering how my life looks ahead of that and, and not letting the fear in of doing life without someone like mum. 
And Mark said to me when I was in hospital the other week, Mum taught me and she prepared me and she gave me everything that I needed. And if I had have needed more time, I would have got that. And now it's just time for me to walk in what she taught me, what she taught so many others. And um, no matter what we threw at her as kids growing up and teenagers and everything else, um, she just loved us. And she always just talked to me about forgiveness and um, just unity. And what I've seen over these last few weeks, just what God's done with our family. And when I say family, that's our friends. Um, just the unity together, but the unity in Christ that he's brought and salvation. And um, that's the goodness in all of this. Um, because there is and she's just with God and I just know that and I'm okay and I'm happy and talking with my boys like her grandchildren her granddaughters in Ballarat they were just her heart and her love um, and we're just going to do our best to just honour her and live our lives just with everything she's taught us and just thank you all because I know you are here because you loved her and um, bless you so much. I love you, Mum. Thanks, Michelle. Would any of the other family members like to say anything, Shazza? Hi, everybody, and hi all to the family online. Um, my cousin Christine, I'm glad to say that I was her favourite cousin, and she was my favourite cousin. Um, and the fact that we are cousins and, and she's my family and she's my first cousin, my mum and dad, my mum, no, my dad, and her mum were brother and sisters. I love that we have the same body shape. We're tall, we get, we get past the sisters, where my other sister could pass as Colleen's sister, they're a bit shorter. But I love that Christine is my family and I love that um, I've got two families, my, one at home and the other one is here right now. My first memory of Christine, I uh, maybe was five or six. She had brown flares on and her hair was like, I love that board, there's just so many hairstyles on there. And I was really scared of her because she was a bit older and we didn't really, we were the younger cousins, so um, we didn't really mix with her much. But it wasn't until um, she came back to Ballarat, I think I might have been like, 19, 18, 19, and we just caught up now and then, and I used to, used to say to everybody, I've got this crazy born-again Christian cousin, she's like, all she does is talk about Jesus, she's really weird. But then I remember um, one day driving back to Ballarat, and God got my intention, and then I went around to Christine's house that night, and she said, what are you doing here, Pops? I said, well, I just got saved in the car, so we went to church. And from then, um, we did life together. In the afternoons, we'd go around, we'd pray in the afternoon and sing, and then we'd go to sleep and have naps in where the sun was coming through the window. That's where we'd settle down and have a sleep. But just doing life with the family and growing up with the kids and watching them grow, and I just feel very blessed that I had, was privileged to be a part of that. Um, I'm just so thankful that the acceptance, the embracing, and the inclusion, inclusion that she offered me, that she offered that to everybody as well. And I hope that I do that to other people as well. Um, we did lots of road trips together. We catch up in the car, where we just catch up from where we got off last time, and just talk. And she'd always be saying like, Pops, you need to get your eyebrows done. Or, And I love that she was so um, honest and so real and wasn't shy with that. Have you thought about this? You need to deal with, deal with that. Like, mm, okay, thank you. But she was so honest and humble, and I just loved her very much. And I'm going to miss her very much. I'm going to stop before I start crying. So I've got one more day, and then I might cry tomorrow. But I'm, I'm just so grateful for the memories and the influence that she had on my life. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. Paul, you're up. Michael, do you want to say anything? Or you... 
I, I, will, I wasn't actually planning or say something this morning, but I sit here and I just need to come up here and share my thoughts. I'm Paul, I'm Shannon's husband, Christine's son-in-law, second son-in-law, <laughs> first one's over there. Um, ever since I met Shannon, mum has always been the same. She treated me like her own. And she just loved me. And the last four, four months that we moved into their house and live with them, um, mum has just been so great. She's co-partnered me with making the boys lunch for school, making dinner, and looking after our baby girl. And I will never forget you, mum. Um, you were like my biological mother, who just loved me for who I am and accept me for who I am. I will miss you, mum. Every weekend, she'll say to my wife, make sure you get Paul to do everything because me and Paul are watching footy tonight. <laughs> and everyone here knows how much mum loves her footy. So I will do miss that. And I will also miss mum taking my side over my wife's. <laughs> Love you, mum. Thank you. Yeah, amen. Paul was very much outnumbered until, um, until mum came along. Okay, so we've just got a, we've got a couple more minutes, and then we're going to have a song. Uh, but does anyone else want to? I mean, we've got other kids. We've got Lee, we've got Lizzie, we've got Chantel, we've got other children that are not biological, but they're all part of the family. So does anyone else want to just come up and say a short word? And then we're, we're going to go into a, a sort of a just a worship song. I'm actually sitting there thinking, do I keep silent? But I don't think my ancestors will let me keep silent. Um, I just want to say. Um, while driving here this morning, I just kept reminding myself that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for mum. Um, when I first met her, I met her when I first had my first child, and I now got eight children. So I've got a big tribe of kids. Um, every time mum went away with Mark, every time she'd be like, oh, you got another one. So just counting along the way. But mum absolutely blessed my life because she not only gave me her, but she also gave me a brother and sister that I will always continue to have through my life. She is the most beautiful, beautiful human being that was put on this earth. And I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be family, for allowing me to, every time she would pray for me, I would feel better within my soul because I know that her miracles would work. She was an amazing woman, and I just want to say how much I will miss her, but I know she's in a better place, and I love you all so much. Perhaps just one more, if anyone really would like to say anything. Yeah, are you moving back there? Okay, thanks, Lizzie. And after this, we're just gonna we're just gonna have another song of worship, and um, never have I known someone so special in my life. Speaking for myself and everyone here, and so many others, she was my wisdom and my discernment. Good or bad, she was the first one that I would call. Like many others, I'm sure, God anointed her to disciple and nourish and to bring joy and love into this broken world. And she not only had lived life, she gave it up for our King Jesus and made this world a better place, leading the way for so many people to be saved and helped along the journey. She's so cherished by so many, especially her beautiful family, God, I may not have the right words, but I know she was so excited to chat with you. So please hold our Mama Chris tight, hold her up. And please, Lord, hold each one of us up with your arms and fill us with your Holy Spirit, fill us with your comfort and your hope. God, knowing that she's in the best place. We love you, Mama Chris. Shine on us, Lord. We need you. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. We're gonna. We're just gonna have a song of worship, and we sort of. We sort of come into an end. Very non-formal.
All my words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah
Pompeii just a few days ago when I was praying, you know, I was thinking about Chris and I thought it's impossible to think a bad thought about Christine. Just impossible. I thought, man, if anyone could have a bad thought about Christine, there's something wrong with them. Seriously. And, you know, the reason that was is because daily she surrendered her life to Jesus. That's why we love her. You know, for, for Christine, the scripture and what Jesus said, that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. And daily, every single day, Christine laid down her life. She put aside her own agendas so that our lives would be touched and those around her would know the love of Jesus. And her greatest desire for all of us, for every single one, for Mark, for us individually, I knew it myself, was that just like she laid down her life every day, that we would lay down our life for Jesus. We would surrender our life to Jesus and know that love that Christine so desired in her life, but for all of us around her. And we're here today and we've heard the words from family and friends just expressing how much love that Christine had in her heart for all of us. And it was the love of Jesus. Amen. It was the love of Jesus. Amen. And as we, as we, I guess in a sense, this mortal body goes back to the earth today. This grain of, this grain of wheat gets sown back into the earth. I know it would be Christine's desire that if there's anyone here today that hasn't surrendered, that it was her will, her desire, she lived for the fact that every life here, every heart here would be surrendered to Jesus and know the love of God. And I know that is her desire. And even at this very last moment, if there was an opportunity, she would be so saying, just surrender to the love of God. Give our lives to Jesus. And I pray that every one of us goes out from this place more determined to be surrendered to him, more determined to be filled with the love of God through the Holy Spirit and that we receive him and we present our lives just to be an offering to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Please take your seats, guys. Um, th those that are um, prepared to carry the coffin, we'll just hand over to Andrew for some direction. So if you're going to be one of the coffin bearers, hand over to you, buddy. Thank you very much, Mark, for leading us in our, our service this morning for Christine. In just a moment, I will be asking the pool bearers to come forward to uh, escort Christine from the chapel into the waiting coffin. Before we leave here today, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your attendance, and in particular those of you watching on live stream, taking time out of your, your busy schedules to be with us today as well. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for the love, care and support that you've given Mark, Blair, Bree, Shannon and Michael and the extended family of Christine over recent days and weeks as well. We know that same love, care and support will continue in the days and weeks ahead as well. So if I could ask for the pallbearers to come forward, please. And once we get to the hearse, you'll have an opportunity to lay some petals onto the coffin of Christine as we say farewell, as you uh, lay those, those petals with the intention that by laying them closest to her, Christine's spirit will be surrounded forevermore with all the love, happiness and wonder which he shared with you all and your faith in Jesus. So if you could please be upstanding. Thank you. And Paul Burroughs, come forward.
Hey! 